Hi guys, welcome back to the blog. My name's Harry, I work for Jason Mikes. And today we're gonna to be talking about uh, DSs and gates. Um, if you've already read the blog post, you'll be aware that um, we're gonna basically just break down the kind of necessity for them, not just on vocals, but specifically in this video, I'm gonna talk about the use on hi-hats for DSs um, and how they can become really, really handy to just kind of smooth out and and um, nullify that really harsh effect that hi-hats can specifically have, especially in um, like electric uh, drum beats and, and things that aren't necessarily like a natural sounding kit where you have a microphone, you can just maybe reposition the microphone or have it off axis. So these will be kind of like one-stop tricks. Um, and then with gates, we're gonna be talking about kind of just taking away some of that tail off of specifically the kick and the snare, and then elongating it using reverb, um, and trying to kind of like shape the signal. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different gates so that you've got a bit more of an idea of um, the kind of more of a console emulation of gates, as well as also then having something that's more specifically designed to be like a digital emulation of gates. Um, so there's a few more features. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are in the session. Um, I've got a session um, open with uh, one of my clients, Kyra, uh, who is doing some more kind of like contemporary pop, um, more of like that uh, kind of like R&B, hip hop kind of thing. Um, so there's not really any acoustic drums in this, but there are more of kind of like the the snares and the the kicks are more kind of 808 situated or there's claps and it's a lot more electronic. And inherently with that, you also get a lot more high end with that, especially um, on things like hi-hats and cymbals. Um, so DSs are really, really good there. And then uh, with the with the 808s and with the claps or you know the snare hits or rim shot hits or anything like that, um, gating can come in super, super handy for shaping not only the the actual tail of each one of the samples, but then also um, it allows you to start adding kind of time-based effects as well, like reverb um, and like short slap delays and things like that can come into uh, much better use um, with that gating. So I thought we'd start on the drums as well, so I can kind of just cover the bass on both DSs and gates straight away. Um, so on the hi-hats, um, you'll notice I'm going to turn off the processing I already have already, um, and I'm just going to work through this, um, and I'll, I'll play the track um, so that you guys can hear it. And then we'll just kind of work through what I've done. So this is the track so far. This is just a demo track. It's a song that we're currently working on. It might get used, it might not get used, but it's a nice track. Um, and it's a bit more laid back, kind of like that easy, easy listening, kind of cruising drive feel. So yeah, have a listen to this. So like, like I say, it's, it's quite a laid back track. So um, the main thing is just making sure that the drums don't feel too overpowering, but there's still a driving force there. Um, and one of the main things that can really, really take away from a track is uh, the hi-hats, especially in electronic stuff where they feel t far too overbearing in maybe one ear or both ears or if they're mono. Um, and so... Uh, let me show you what I mean. So these are the, the hi-hats without any processing at all. And then I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can go about this. Um, and my favorite one, uh, specifically for, for kind of hip hop and R&B kind of stuff. They're quite harsh. Um, like it's, it's definitely in that upper like eight to 10 K range. Um, but I don't like getting rid of all of that brightness and I definitely don't want to detune them or anything like that because then you can get some really strange artifacts, especially if you have um, maybe loops or samples that um, have been pre-made, for example, like these ones. Uh, these ones are actually from cymatics.fm, uh, um, which are great, by the way, if you, if you are looking for anything that is going to speed up your workflow and help you to kind of uh, inspire creativity um, then they are a great place to go to 
Um, so let me show you what I've done with the hi-hat. So essentially the, the main thing actually is just this Soothe um, instance, which I think this is um, the, one of the presets from Adam Getgood, Nolly who is one of our one of our um, artists um, but he has a bunch of these ones and I've just kind of kept it as my default user preset because I put it on all my overheads um, for a lot of my drums as well and it just does exactly what it says on the tin it just soothes all the top end um, but it essentially acts as like a super advanced uh, de-esser so this is kind of like my one-stop shop um, super quick works every time kind of de-essing um, so I'm just gonna bypass it and then um, I'll I'll re I'll put it back on as we go through and I'll do it to both of the hi hats as well as you can hear they're on left and right. So this is just the hi hats with no processing and then I'll put the processing on. It just immediately becomes so much easier to listen to um, comparatively. So if I remove the um, the processing on that, and we're just going to open up uh, a different deesser, something that is. Let's go for this. Uh, let's go for the Renaissance deesser from Waves. So this is a really really nice deesser as well. Um, super super easy to use. But you can see that there's um, these different bands. You've obviously got like kind of like a big shelf DS, uh, or you've got kind of like that, just a almost like a bell curve. Um, and this is the red line here and this purple bit is kind of what we're mainly focusing in on. And this is kind of what it's aiming towards. So I'm just going to put on this listen function here. And then we're just going to kind of listen through and sweep through the frequencies to try and find where the harsh points are. It's definitely around that that kind of 6k range um, so let's put this on and then we'll bypass it and we'll see how it sounds let's whack it back over to the side <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot, lot better. So if we turn on the processing for the other hi-hat as well, you'll hear this. It's a really, really obvious one, isn't it? So, like I say, like that's another way to go about it. Um, I personally prefer Soothe. It just it feels more natural even though it's not um but it feels far more natural uh, to my ears but it it honestly it just depends on on what kind of feel you're going for and like i say this is um, um it needs to be a lot smoother so soothe definitely fits here so i thought i'd just show you the the kick and the snare um and specifically actually we'll we'll, we'll focus in on the snare more than anything so um i've got this instance of the 50 series um from lindel audio uh, which if you've been reading the blog or or seen the blog you'll know that i absolutely adore um this channel strip and there's uh, some decent compression going on um there's not a huge amount in terms of like what i'm doing to the eq and it's it's relatively balanced like they look like drastic moves but these quite middle of the range um kind of size curves as well um and then you can see the gate is currently well i usually have it around about this 200 second range and the release is really important on gates because it kind of it it determines like how much and how much of the length of that sample you want to let through for how long before the gate gets rid of it so if for example like you the the sample 
line was up here for like the highest peak and your threshold was also about here the sample would only come through for say 200 milliseconds before it's just shut straight off whereas the longer that you have that release and the lower that that threshold is the more gentle the effect kind of becomes so let me try and demonstrate in in this so this is without any sort of gating at all um and i'll just i'll just turn this off completely in fact actually we'll get rid of the reverb as well so you can hear it a little bit easier and then if we turn the gate on we have a bit more drastic and bring it a little bit further up. And you can hear how quickly, it's not a long sample in any shape or form, but it becomes so much shorter. It's almost just like that little kind of thing. So I'm going to slowly increase the release. Um, we're going to keep the, the threshold at around about zero for now. And I'm just going to go between kind of like the, the quickest setting for the release. And then I'm going to go up to around about 200 300 milliseconds. Now if we really if we bring the threshold down, that is going to be so much of a less obvious gate. So I'm going to start doing that now. So around about there, and then we can probably put this at around about, I'd say 150 or so. With and without. And then with again. It's very subtle, but it helps to clean up the reverb, um, especially bearing in mind that we're trying to add the tail in the reverb as well. And there's just a big old reverb um, just splashed straight across the entire drum bus um, at a really, really low uh, mix and, and quite a short decay as well. I'm just using the standard A plate from the uh, the old LX480 uh, unit. So let's move on to the kick. And the same thing applies. Um, on, on this one, I've actually not done any gating as of yet. So what I'm going to do is add a different type of gate. Uh, so we can start to move around with that as well. So let's go with it without. And then we're going to add the gate into it as we go along. Um, have the threshold slightly lower down and then move it slightly further up. The great thing about the uh, the fab filter uh, gate as well is that you can you can actually see exactly what is going on as well. So the attack for you actually have an attack control. Sorry, uh, in this one as well. So uh, with with the attack, it kind of tells you how much time as well it it takes for the gate to ignore almost the the transient detail that's coming through. So let's move the gate up to around about that two millisecond range. And then we'll increase the release and then move the threshold all the way up and then start to move back down. You can actually hear it has a smoothing effect on the attack of this. Um, so if we move the attack all the way back, you'll start to hear the difference in this as well. So this is probably a good thing to show you. You can hear it has that really nice smoothing effect. So we're going to move this down, keep the attack at kind of like zero milliseconds because we're really not looking to smooth this kick sample. We just want to kind of keep it nice and punchy. So I'm going to put this down to, let's go to around about 10, minus 10 dB and then play with this release style over here and see if we can just shorten that kick. And it's mainly the sub uh, of the kick that's kind of a little bit too long for my liking.
that's about where I want it. That 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 seems really good. So another feature in Gates, usually, especially on digital gates, is a look ahead feature, which allows the plugin to kind of preempt um, the incoming sound. So it, you kind of get a bit more of a, a clearer detail, and you get less um, of that kind of artifact right at the very start of the gate um, with it kind of releasing and, and then attacking again. Another really cool function as well is that you can have a sidechain. So you can try and, if, if for example, you're working on actual drums, um, sidechains are really useful for use, uh, finding where the main information for, say, uh, a snare or a tom um, is, is it's kind of made up. So in that 200 to 300 hertz range, um, and if there's a lot of symbol information in there, you can ask the gate to essentially just focus in on that selected band of frequencies. Um, and it's a bit more accuracy as to what you're trying to gate and what you're trying to allow through and what you are trying to also get rid of within the gate. So let's try that function as well. Um, we don't need it all the way down at 10, but we could probably do with having it up to around about the 100 hertz mark between between 30 and 100, that would probably work quite nicely. You can hear immediately we're getting a much different sound um, just by adding the look ahead and engaging the sidechain. So I'm going to move this threshold down a little bit so we can get it a little bit smoother. Now we're getting a bit of a problem with uh, some. This is like a almost like a a pop artifact that is uh, is coming in. So I'm going to start to engage this knee, and you can actually see on the curve it starts to just kind of smooth off um, how hard it attacks. So I'm just going to engage that now. That's much better. So this is without. No with. Much, much nicer. If we actually move this before the compressor, uh, I've got um, quite a hard compressor. And the uh, the 160 is kind of really well known for being great on kick and snare and just drums in general. So let's listen through with just the drums and then we'll add these drums back in again um, and I'll take all the processing off and then we'll add it on as we go through. So this is just the drums solo out. And then with the processing. Add that into the full mix. That's much better to my ears, personally. So that is, uh, that's kind of my main go-tos on um, DSs and gates. Um, I might revisit this a little bit later on, and I have recently spoken about DSs and gates, so I'm not going to ramble on for too long. Um, but try and use these uh, across the board. Um, great places to use them, um, and I've also written about this in the blog as well. Um, so if you're not reading this from within the blog, then I highly recommend going and reading that, and all the applicable links will be in the description below. Um, but other great places to use this are um, mastering DSs are very specific and they're meant to be used very gently. Um, they're a whole different topic in themselves, but they can be used there. Vocals are a great example. Um, I'll probably DS these vocals before I even put this out um, so that can be used completely across the board. Um, guitars as well. Sometimes you'll want to use a DSA on guitars to really kind of hone in on, on some squeaky parts, especially on acoustic guitar. DSs can become really, really helpful trying to eliminate some of that pick attack. Um, overheads are a great one as well. Pretty much anything that you like, you can try and use the DSA and try and be creative with it as well. Don't limit yourself to just kind of what might be the normal places to use a DSA. And the same thing applies to gates. Gates can be used on, especially bass, and, uh, bass guitar and guitar, 
obviously all drums really other than things that are kind of meant for a bit more ambient so i wouldn't recommend maybe using gates on overhead mics or on uh, room mics for example so there you have it that's the s's and gates so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please make sure you subscribe um like the video it really does help um and if you want to read more or learn more about our mics like this one for example or if you want to dive into some other parts of the audio world then as i say all applicable links are down in the description below until next time though guys stay creative